part 47 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss the basics of WCF security. First, let's understand some of the fundamental security terms with respect to WCF. Authentication, the process of identifying the sender and recipient of the message. Authorization, the process of determining what rights the authenticated user has. Confidentiality, the process of ensuring that only the intended recipient of the message can view the message as it is being transmitted from the sender to the receiver. We achieve confidentiality by encrypting the message. If you are not encrypting the message and if it is being transmitted in plain text format and if we have a malicious user sniffing the network, he could very easily look at the contents of your message thereby compromising its confidentiality. Integrity the process of ensuring that the message is not tampered with by a malicious user as it is being transmitted from the sender to the receiver. We achieve integrity by signing the message. The sender of the message is going to digitally sign the message. Upon that message arriving at the recipient, the recipient is going to check the digital signature. If there is a mismatch, obviously the message is tampered with as it was being transmitted from the sender to the receiver. Out of the box, most of the bindings in WCF, with one exception that is the basic HTTP binding, provides all of these security features. The basic HTTP binding is the only binding which does not provide uh, you know, any of these security features by default. The binding in WCF obviously determines the security scheme that you get. The MSDN link right here lists all the system provided bindings and their respective security defaults. Let's actually navigate to that link. So here I have that URL. I'll have this link available on my blog in case you need it. So these are the system provided bindings and here is the mode of security that is available with each of you know these bindings. So if you look at basic HTTP binding, look at that the default is none so the default is present within the bracket the default is none but we can configure the basic HTTP binding to provide transport security or message security or a mixed security mode and if you look at WS HTTP binding the default is message security and if you look at net TCP binding the default is transport security now let's understand the difference between message and transport security in a later video session we'll understand what we mean by mixed security mode now from a security perspective when sending a message between a client and a WCF service there are two things that we need to consider the WCF message itself and the medium or protocol over which the message is sent. In the previous video sessions, uh, we discussed that we can use protocols like HTTP, TCP, MSMQ, etc. to send messages. So we have a protocol and the WCF message itself. Now, let's understand what we mean by transport security. Securing the transport channel is called transport security. Each of the protocols, for example, HTTP, TCP, MSMQ, etc., they have their own way of providing transport security. For example, TCP provides transport security by implementing TLS, that is, transport layer security. The TLS implementation is provided by the operating system. HTTP, on the other hand, provides transport security by using SSL over HTTP, that is, secure socket layer over HTTP. A common example that we encounter in our daily lives is when we buy a product and when we are about to make a payment, you know, notice the change in the URL changes from HTTP to HTTPS to protect the, um, you know, credit card details that is being transmitted over HTTP. So we are using their SSL or HTTP to, to secure our messages at the transport level. But one thing to keep in mind as far as transport security is concerned is that it only provides point-to-point -point channel security. It means if there is an intermediary like a load balancer or a proxy in between the sender and the recipient, then that intermediary is going to have direct access to the contents of the message. That's because Transport security provides security at the transport layer. So when the message reaches the intermediary, the message itself is not protected, which means that intermediary has access to the contents of the message before it is ultimately sent uh, to the ultimate recipient. Okay, so keep in mind transport security only provides point-to-point -point channel security. On the other hand, message security is uh, securing the message itself by encapsulating the security credentials into every SOAP message. 
as the message itself is protected it provides end-to-end -end security no matter how many intermediaries it's going to traverse you know as the message itself is protected we will get end-to-end -end security and the MSDN link right here um, explains all the differences between message security and transport security and when to use one over the other let's actually navigate to that URL so here are the benefits of using message security so it provides end-to-end -end security and it provides increased flexibility as well because we are now including the security details within the message so you have flexibility on what parts of the message you want to encrypt and what you don't want to encrypt and sign so there's increased flexibility there and support for multiple transports as well uh, you can send secured messages over many different transport protocols okay and support for a wide set of credentials and claims again within the message you can use any type of claims that you want and here are the pros and cons of transport level security so what are the advantages of using transport security it does not require the communicated parties to understand XML level security concepts because if you look at uh, message security we're including uh, the security credentials within the message but with transport uh, the security is provided with the transport layer so there's no need to understand those XML level security concepts with transport security uh, which means this also improves the interoperability and generally with transport we get improved performance and hardware accelerators are also available and streaming is possible and what are the downsides of using transport it only provides hop to hop that is point to point um, you know security only limited and an extensible set of credentials because that's limited by the transport uh, protocol that we use and if you look at the message level security these are the disadvantages the main one is the performance because now since we are using the security credentials with the message itself or uh, the message size is bloated obviously that's going to contribute to the performance and we cannot use message streaming and obviously to use message security we need to understand the implementation of XML level security mechanisms and support for WS security specifications which means it's going to affect the interoperability as well right uh, let's actually look at an example of using message-based security so let's flip to Visual Studio let's create a new project let's say we want to create a class library project and let's call this hello service and let's delete this class 1.cs file that is generated and to this project let's add a new item and we want to add a WCF service and let's actually call our WCF service hello service and let's change the operation contract signature to return a string and let's actually call this get message and we want to pass a message to this um, contract let's get to the implementation file and we want to implement I hello service so let's provide the implementation for get message operation contract all this uh, method is going to do is concatenate this word hello with whatever message we are going to receive and then return that okay so a very simple WCF service there now let's host our WCF service using a console application so let's add a new project of type console application let's call this host and to this project we need to add a reference to system.service model assembly and we also need to add a reference to hello service project so let's go ahead and add that alright now let's add an application configuration file where we can specify the configuration for our WCF service and to speed things up I already have the config here so let me copy and paste it right here again this is the same configuration that we have been um, discussing in the previous sessions of this video series if you look at the endpoint right here that is the address and look at the binding we are using we are using WS HTTP binding and what is the default security mode for WS HTTP binding message security message based security so the message is going to be um, encrypted and signed encryption 
provides confidentiality. Signing the message provides integrity, meaning nobody can tamper that as it's being transmitted and confidentiality ensures that nobody can view the message. Okay, so message security by default is going to encrypt and sign the message. Let's actually prove that with this example. So we're using WSHTTP binding right here and within program.cs file let's bring in system.service model namespace and then here we need to write code to have the service up and running so let's copy and paste this code in the interest of time all right so now let's set our host project as our startup project and let's go ahead and run this by pressing control f5 so our host is started. Now let's create a client for this WCF service. Let's actually create a new Windows Forms application. And let's call this Windows Client. And all we are going to do is drag and drop a button and a text box control onto this web uh, form. So we have the button here. We have the text box here. So let's quickly change the text on the button to something like get message. All right. And then let's double click on the button to generate a click event handler. Let's add a service reference. So the service reference is going to be uh, to 8080, localhost 8080. That's where our WCF service is available. So let's give the namespace as hello service. Click OK. And let's create an instance of the hello service client. Let's call it client equals new client. And let's invoke get message and pass whatever we type into the text box. And whatever we get back, we are going to display that within message box. All right. Now, while we are here, let's actually close the WCF service that's running. Let's enable message logging for this WCF service so that we can view that encrypted and signed message. And to uh, enable message logging, go to WCF service configuration editor, click on file, open config file, and we want to open the app.config file. Click on diagnostics, enable log auto flash, and we want to enable message logging. Then expand diagnostics, go to message logging, and then log entire message. So we discussed to um, discussed enabling message logging uh, in part nine of this video series. So I'm not going to go into the details of that. So basically, we have enabled message logging. Okay. So it has placed a, a file with .svc log extension within the host project folder. So let's go ahead and run our WCF service now. Let's run the client. And let's pass, for example, Prajim as the message. Click Get Message. We should get a response back. Okay. Hello, Prajim. Now, let's go to our host project, open the folder in Windows Explorer, and we have this app underscore messages.svc log. And if you look at the log, and if you look at the last message here, notice that here we have the SOAP envelope, which has got the SOAP header. And if you look at the SOAP body right here, look at that the contents of the body is encrypted and it is signed as well. It's not in plain text. Now quickly, let's close the WCF service. Let's also close the client. Let's change the security mode. Look at this. Now we just specify the binding as WSHTTP binding. We didn't customize it. Now let's go ahead and customize the binding. So let's say bindings. We want to customize WS HTTP binding. And let's give that binding a name. Let's call it WS HTTP. And here we can specify the security mode. Look at that. We have different modes here. Now let's set none, meaning we don't want any security in spite of using WS HTTP binding. And the last thing that we need to do is associate the binding configuration that we have specified here with the endpoint using binding configuration attribute. So let's go ahead and run the WCF service. Let's go to the client. 
let's delete the service reference and let's add the service reference once again let's say the namespace is hello service so now we specify that we don't want any security let's see how the message is going to be now that is the logged message so let's say prajim click on get message so we should get a response back now let's go back to the host project and open the service log and if we scroll all the way down look at that it's in plain text right now it's not encrypted it's not signed which means we didn't we don't get confidentiality and integrity all right so that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day